Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a new series for my channel. It's a dreams tutorial. I'm going to go through each of the gadgets in turn, starting today with the trigger zone. Um, if you can't wait for me to go through all of the gadgets, because it's obviously going to take quite a few weeks to go through them all, um, you can check out my website, dreamschool.co.uk, where I um, have a index of all of the gadgets with uh, descriptions uh, written with Quietly Wrong from Dream Bubble and um, uh, you can have a look on there and there's also links to videos by Jimmy Jules 153 who's already done uh, some really great uh, single gadget uh, tutorials you can check those out instead of mine see how generous I am um, uh, they're very good uh, you can go and check those out after after this okay so we're going to start off with our trigger zone gadgets now you're probably very familiar with this um, because we've used this quite a bit in our tutorials before. Um, we've used this for uh, opening doors, we've popped it into puppets and had it to detect enemies. Um, uh, we've used it for picking up objects. So it's a quite a versatile little gadget. And what it is, is a trigger zone. It is a detection zone, a bit like a burglar alarm if you like. So I can place that in the world. And if I select it like this, you can see the trigger zone. Um, now, because we're going to be playing about with this a lot, um, we don't really want it so that when I don't have it selected, I can't see the trigger zone. So we're just going to turn on, on show and hide, the zones. And while we're there, we're going to put on x-ray in case we put some microchips on. We want to be able to see those. There are those have popped up on our puppet so we can easily grab them. It's all very good. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a burglar alarm. Um, here is our trigger zone. And I'm going to place that in our area here there we go I think it's a bit big so I'm going to reduce that down by pressing the d-pad and that can uh, increase and in uh, decrease and increase the size this is increasing and increasing the size of the actual gadget um, itself as well so you might not want to do that because it has a gizmo if you select the trigger zone there's a gizmo grab that with your R2 button and there we go, we can reduce down the size of our zone without changing the size of our gadget, which is better. We can also move this around independently of our gadget. Our gadget and our zone do not have to be in the same place. You can move that around independently, which is really very handy. Right then, so I've got my trigger zone all set up. Now you'll notice on the gadget it has a output socket, a single output socket. This says detected, it's a sort of a target thing uh, with a tick in it. Just wire from there, so click on that and wire into our light, uh, straight into the power. So now this light is only going to turn on if it's getting a signal from our trigger zone. And our trigger zone will only send a signal if it's detecting something within its trigger zone. What is it detecting? Well, the default is a possessed puppet. So it's looking for the player, basically. Uh, I've got a couple here, so let's go into play mode and see what happens. So I'm going to possess one of my puppets and I'm going to walk into the zone and my light comes on. And if I walk out of the zone, the light comes off. There we go. So we've created a burger alarm sort of thing. There we go. So what this um, gadget is, is basically it's a detection situation. So when things walk into an area, um, you wire this to your microchip, a gadget, whatever. Whatever it's going to run, it can run an entire program. Whatever it's going to run, um, it's going to send a signal while it's detecting whatever it's been programmed to detect. So there's a lot of things in the tweak menu. Let me go in. I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible because my first attempt at making this video was 45 minutes long, which I think is too long. So let's go to page two. And we have zone size. Now here is where you can change the shape of your zone. So we have a sphere as the um, default. And then we've got a square, a cylinder, a cone, an ellipsoid, and finally the scene. So um, all of these are uh, shapes that might be useful. Uh, now you'll notice that the cylinder, for example, it shows it as an upright cylinder, but it actually gives you as a cylinder laying down. If you want to rotate 
your zone you can press the left uh, two button and then move with your joystick and then you can rotate your zone as you like without moving it uh, R2 to obviously move it around let's go back to our sphere um, actually I think cones are really good for um, things like this with it like where you've got a platform and you want to detect whether the player is standing on them I think a cone is a pretty good uh, option if you can get it in the right position the trouble is 3d space is it is very difficult to make sure you've got it that's roughly right that'll do that'll roughly do uh, so those are the shapes uh, the one thing um, that, that you might find unusual is seam this is the whole scene so the entire scene is the trigger zone there isn't a specific area and you might think what's the point of that well it can be quite handy for detecting um, uh, objects that are not currently in the scene so emitted objects for example uh, this could detect whether an object has been emitted and is in the scene somewhere um, so maybe you've got hidden objects that get emitted and you have uh, some sort of program with a warning on it for the player saying this this thing is is uh, has been emitted is in your scene somewhere go find it uh, it could do that um, at the moment what it's doing is looking for possessed control sensors so it doesn't turn on until I possess a player and then immediately it turns on so that could be useful to you maybe set something off there are other ways of doing it obviously but that's a, that's a way to have um, something quick and simple uh, so it's just looking for a particular thing in the entire scene right let's have a look at zone size let's use the sphere okay so here's our sphere let's pop it back down um, zone size I can change the zone size like I showed you before with um, the, the d-pad or you can move it with this slider and the good thing about this as is it's a slider in the tweak menu is it's got an input socket so you can wire this uh, to some other gadget that's providing you with a number and you can change the zone size automatically during your game so you can have uh, different zone sizes uh, depending on the situation and that can make a big difference to your game so that you can wire that in uh, we also have a zone fall off there we go um, this is a separate zone outside your other zone and what this does is it still detects the presence of whatever you're detecting but um, the power that it's sending in the signal increases as you get uh, closer to the trigger zone itself so if I go into my player let me just come out of this zone if we walk into the zone slowly there we go now you see there's a very faint light as I start to enter the zone and as I walk, walk closer and closer to the center it's getting brighter and brighter it's really hard to tell it's very subtle I think you can see that so this is quite good if you want an effect like a light or um, sound effect or something to get brighter and brighter or louder and louder uh, as you as a player moves towards. That's the sort of thing that you could use that for. That's what the zone. But most of the time you're not going to use a zone fall off. Um, you're just going to have a, a standard zone. But there are there are good reasons for using this um, in sort of intermediate uh, programs where you. You, you need a little bit more control over how the distance from um, the center of your zone is right so that's that right let's go into the first page things to detect then okay uh, at the moment it's looking for possessed controller sensors so as soon as you possess one of these puppets it's going to um, it's going to detect it uh, we've also got name to detect as an option here this is looking for a specific named controller sensor so um, if I was to go into this puppet logic here for example and I've done that again I don't know why I do that but I do it every time right controller logic here is our controller sensor um, if I go into this tweak menu I can rename this give this a name let's call him Fred right now this controller uh, sensor is called Fred 
So I can press down on the D-pad and it's now looking for Fred. So now I'll possess this guy and nothing is happening because he's not Fred. He is a possessed controlled uh, object but he's not Fred. So let's come out of him, go into Fred and now Fred can set off the um, alarm. So that way um, you can have exclusive or exclusive classes of um, possessed controlled objects. Um, so you could have um, wizards, for example. Only wizards can set off the light. Um, so it's looking for a controlled wizard and then it's going to set off the light. So there we go. That's how you would use uh, that. So that's looking for um, a name of the controlled sensor. Here is a tag. This is looking for the name of a tag. This is looking for a tag within the player. So um, there's a follow me tag in all of um, the puppets. Um, whoops, not that one. If you go into follow behavior, you'll see it. There it is. And uh, as you can see, it's flashing. Um, with everything that you select, uh, on the trigger zone when you've got this open it will show you uh, what it's going to detect and in this case it's going to detect this tag here so this tag is now flashing away um, so it's going to find a follow me tag so as all of them have follow me tags there we go but only in a possessed puppet that follow me tag only works if the puppet is possessed because it's inside his microchip however if I was to go into this puppet logic and take his follow behavior right make a copy of that follow me tag and stick it on his chest um right i'm now going to this is the guy that's possessed and now as you can see even my follower now is going to set that off because he now has a tag that's independent of his microchip so you don't need to possess so watch for that then um if it's uh if the if the tag is inside a microchip for a possessed uh player then um it's not going to work uh, unless that player is possessed so that's what it's looking for okay so that's the tag now things to notice about the tags it's not just detecting the tag it's also activating the tag um, here is um, a really good example of that this is uh, a level complete program um, this is a microchip inside all of the players um, which activates um, from a tag called level complete so if we go into our detect zone let me just let me look, sho shovel, shovel all these down and open this again there we go right so that's that one and we'll open up our trigger zone here we go right so uh, we're going to choose level complete this time and level complete is flashing now in in our player brain and so when this activates it's uh when it detects this tag it's going to activate this tag this tag is then going to run this program which is going to create a victory pose and change the cat and turn the camera on so let's have a look see what it's doing well hey he's leapt in the air he's got his arm up in the air and that's it my camera is now fixed here and i can't do anything so that's what that does so watch out for that sort of thing so you can run programs from the from this uh, into into a tag uh, when you've activated that tag um, it activates a program so that's another way to use the detection zones let's just get rid of that right okay um, other things to detect the imp this is going to find any loose imps imps that are not possessing anything um, and that's going to so if we turn that on I can move my imp into the zone there we go it's turning the light on and off 
Um, this one I'm not sure about. It says it detects the camera. Um, I've tried moving cameras in and out. Here is a camera. Uh, I've tried moving the cameras in and out. It says it's detecting the camera, but uh, carrots, cameras currently being used by the player. But um, in this example, it didn't seem to turn the light on when I tried moving cameras into the into the zone, etc. So I'm going to leave that one. Uh, if somebody wants to leave it in the comments how you would use that particular thing to detect, that would be great because I'm not 100% sure how you'd use that. Right, this one, Dream Reverse Element. This is a bit of a weird one. Um, uh, this has actually activated this down here, which is not very obvious because it's sort of gone dark green. Um, this way you can uh, find, detect a Dream Reverse Element. So if I go into here and click, it takes me into uh, my feed so I can look at my creations or the whole of the dream reverse and pick an object I've picked my chicken so now um, this is let me just rewind that because I don't want him in that victory pose all the time um, it's going to look for um, that dream reverse element to be in my scene um, now there is another uh, things to detect option which is scene element which does pretty much the same thing except this one is wired and this one is wireless so you can bear that in mind also this one which is wired has a, a, an extra thing which I'll show you in a minute okay so you've got um, uh, dreamverse element so if my dreamverse element is in my game um, so I will put my chicken in my game let's plop it over there because I haven't altered this yet I'll have to get to that because I can't have it so that the grab sensor is in the wrong place that's why um, there we go so here's my chicken as you can see it's flashing away because that's what we're going to detect and there's my chicken if I possess him and walk him into the zone he's going to set the light off there we go so that's what that's going to do um, and while we're on the subject of um, a scene element here we have our scene element um, this time we're going to wire scene element to detect there's our input socket we're just going to wire to our chicken let's select our chicken can we select it our trouble is our chicken is in the wrong place there we go wire to chicken there we go it's now selecting our chicken exactly the same as it did with the dream reverse elements that now it's wired instead um, and there we go so that's that's going to set off our alarm exactly the same way right so there, that's that one uh, so we've missed one that's labels now you'll notice everything is flashing uh, why is everything flashing? Why is everything being detected? That's because we haven't specified which labels we want to detect. And if we go to the labels page, this is where all the labels are, you want to notice everything is selected, including unlabeled. If I unclick unlabeled, everything stops flashing. So it's now not detecting anything because no, nothing in my scene has got one of these labels. So all I need to do is label up one of my objects let's label up this puppet whoops i don't know why i did that there we go into the uh, into to its main tweak menu there's a label option there okay so i'm going to call him a friend so uh, now the trigger zone is going to detect that one and not any of the others so let's take our chicken no our chicken's not doing it I don't know which one of these is it is that one there we go that one is labeled up as friend so that's setting off the light okay there are filters that you can use for labels um, visible hidden or both I say both it's either really visible hidden or either both is probably the wrong word um, collidable not collidable or either and um, any selected all selected so uh, for this one it's got to have all of these selected in its in its brain this one it's got to have any of these selected in its brain I like to just do things like this where so this is now only going to detect the friends and or only going to detect the foes 
that's the sort of thing that you do um, in uh, in uh, our combat situation if you looked at the two tutorial for that that's what I used for that so I labelled up my player as a friend and all the enemies of foes so that I could have detect zones that would only detect one or the other so that's what you use for the labels there's also a name to detect here similar to uh, the tag that um, the um, sorry the possessed controller sensor option but this time it's the actual name of the the thing so up here where it says blank puppet deluxe you could change that to whatever name you wanted like like that so that's sam and then we type in sam in here so now it's looking for um, somebody called Sam who's, who's got a friend label who is visible and collidable so there we go that's how you would filter the labels alright um, these two here possessable controller sensors and all controller sensors these are less useful less frequently used um, options uh, this is obviously looking for um, controller sensors that you can possess and this one is looking for any controller sensor um, so any remote control sensor will also be set off by one of these um, it has limited uses uh, these are the ones that you're going to be using the most and again you can um, have different controller sensors with different names uh, to detect in here right detection scope um, this is used used for tags. Um, so this can uh, look for tags that are everywhere, looks for tags that are only in the group or microchip that the, the tag is in, or not here, which is everything but the um, tag, uh, the, the group or microchip that the tag is in. So this is quite useful if you're getting um, an issue where the player is detecting himself, for example, uh, where he's doing some stabbing and he's accidentally detecting a, a similar tag in um, uh, in something that is stabbing, then you could have not here and so it won't detect anything that's not in the microchip or the group um, that we're in. So that might be useful, but the default is that one, and that's mostly where you will be. This is number required, so you can adjust how many uh, of a particular thing needs to be into the trigger zone before it says, yes, I'm, I've am i detected you. So uh, uh, you can have lots and lots of objects need to be in there. Maybe the player has to collect a lot of objects and place them in a zone. Um, you could have a, a game based on that mechanic and you could set your the how many things needs to be in that zone before it uh, you uh, set off the trigger and then something can happen so example you could bring a load of blocks in stack them all up in a in an area and then it will trigger a door opening for example that's what that's for uh, this is uh, just an output to tell you how many have been detected at any one time so you could have uh, different things happening at different numbers stick a calculator on there for example or you could have a, a number displayer to say how many you've collected uh, displayed on the screen uh, this we've already seen this activates with either dreamiverse element or scene element and there's the scene element for wiring and here's our detected that's the output that you see on the side of the gadget um, you could wire that into a program into a light into anything you like uh, that says okay I've detected now do something uh, this here consider players this is to do with multiplayer we don't have multiplayer yet so you don't really need to worry about this and to be honest I can't demonstrate it to you because um, we don't have multiplayer so I'm going to leave that one alone and there's your power socket so you can turn the power on and off on your trigger zone and that's true for all gadgets they all have one of those so there you go Hopefully that was a much quicker than the first time I did it. Thank you for watching. Hope that was useful and I'll catch you in your dreams.